Welcome to Teacher Bob channel. In this tutorial, you will learn the form of riff, the three left hand techniques that George applied on his lead guitar playing, the triads, the picking pattern for the arpeggiated triads, the solo guitar part, and the change of key within the song, which is called modulation. According to Paul, and I Love Her was the first ballad he got himself impressed with. John considered the song as Paul's first yesterday. Paul had written the ballad on the piano at Jane Asher's house, so it was assumed generally that it was written for her. But when he was asked if it was for Jane, Paul shrugged it off and said, Just a love song. It wasn't for anyone. Paul was amused to know that Don McLean liked the song tweaking it for his own song, and I love you so. According to this book, here's what transpired in the first half of 1964. Takes 1 and 2 in the afternoon of February 25th at Studio 2 from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. It was George's birthday. The song was one of the soundtracks for their first movie, A Hard Day's Night. John on Gibson J160E. Paul on Hofner 500-1 bass, George on his 12-string Rickenbacker, and Ringo on drums. And according to the book The Beatles, the biography by Bob Spitz, after two takes, the Beatles couldn't find the right way to harness it. Dick James, who was visiting the studio, felt the song was just too repetitive. And during a tape change, he mentioned as much to George Martin. Apparently, Martin agreed because he called for a short recess and left the control room briefly to discuss it with the band. James claims that Martin suggested they write a middle eight to break up the repetitious verses. John and Paul went to the piano while Mal Evans was getting tea and some sandwiches. Within half an hour, the boys wrote a very constructive middle eight to a very commercial song. Takes 3 to 19 in the evening of February 26th from 7 to 10 p.m. at Studio 2. It was a remake with Ringo swapped his drums for bongos and claves and the middle eight section was added. Takes 20 and 21 in the evening of February 27th at Studio 2 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. A re-remake with Take 21 the Better Take and this features the famous intro guitar riff by George. Paul credited George for the riff as it made a stunning difference. The final take also features modulation, a semitonal key change for George's solo from key of E to F, ramps of the drum, and the closing chord Picardi third resolution to D major, which allows the song to end happily in keeping with the optimism of the lyrics. Under the course of three days from February 25 to 27, the song evolved from electric I give her all my love. to acoustic setup, with George switching to his Jose Ramirez guitar at his studio guitar and Ringo for going the drums by playing bongos and plays. This acoustic setup was another first for the band. The riff has four notes. For the first note, use the tip of your middle finger on the fifth string at second fret, the tip of your ring finger on the fourth string at second fret, the tip of your index finger on the fourth string at first fret, and the fourth note, the tip of your small finger on the fifth string at fourth fret and apply vibrato by moving your left hand sideways. For the intro, George played the riff three times. Throughout the whole song, George was using a pick for trebler notes. For the first verse, George didn't do anything for this part, 
Silence or rest is a good element to use to create a dramatic entrance for George's delicate arpeggiations over triad chords from the second verse onwards. For the second verse, George applied arpeggiations over triad chords. He played triad chords broken. A triad chord is the simplest form of chord with three notes having one count each. A triad chord can be thought of as a partial chord. This is C major chord, and for this chord you play five strings. Let's identify the tones that are involved. This is C, this is E, G, another C, which is an octave of this, and another E which is an octave of this. So you have two C's, two E's, and one G. So a total of five counts. But there are only three different tones, C, E, and G. A triad chord should only have one count for each tone. Now this is a triad for, for the simple C. We have G, C, and E. So this is a triad chord for C major chord, the simple open chord. This is the full chord, and this is the triad. So you can also thought of triad as a chord that are played on the treble strings the first, second, and third strings. And that's how George played the triad chords. For this C major chord, the triad is just playing the three treble strings. The verses have five chords. F sharp minor, C sharp minor, A major, B major, and E major. But George didn't play the first position chords. In other words, he didn't play this shape for F sharp minor, not this shape for C sharp minor, not this shape for A major, not this shape for B major, and not this shape for E major. He played those shapes in the middle area of the fretboard. Let's discuss the first chord of the verse. Looking at the diagram, if you're familiar to a table of chord diagram, you would see this chord called B flat minor. This is the full shape for this chord. You play five strings. And to play the triad version for this chord B flat minor, just play the treble strings. The third, the second, and the first. And since we're not playing the other strings, then we can simplify the shape we are, not take, we are not playing the fourth string, so take out the ring finger. And we are not playing the other strings, so we can have the index finger just pressing the first string. Now the fingering can be simplified to this. Now this is the triad for B flat minor. If this is B flat minor, then this is C minor. And this would be D minor. And this would be E minor. And this is F sharp minor. And this is the shape that George played for this chord. The triad for this chord, F sharp minor. And the way he played it, he begins with the third string, then second string, then first string goes back to second string and that's how he played the triad chord broken or the arpeggiation of the triad chord third second first second but he played two rounds for each chord what I'm saying is for F sharp minor he played two rounds of this second 
And again, so two rounds is this one. First round, then second round. Sets a total of eight pickings for each chord. So his right hand finger picking pattern, although he's not using the finger picking technique for the right hand because he is using a pick, is this way. You begin with the third string, goes to second string, first string, back to second string, and do another round of that sequence. And that's it for this chord. And that's good for one measure. Each chord is played for one measure. So one measure for F sharp minor on arpeggiation. The next chord is C sharp minor. And the th shape of triad chord he used for C sharp minor is based from this one. If you are familiar to F minor, for this F minor in first position, the triad chord for this is simply picking the treble strings. And since we are not playing the fourth and the fifth strings, as well as the sixth, so we can take out this finger and we can now simply adjust the index finger to just press the treble strings. So this is a triad form for F minor. And George Harrison used this shape for C sharp minor. So if this is F minor, here would be G minor, A minor, B minor, and C sharp minor. And for the right hand pattern, it's the same. You begin with the third string, second string, first string, back to second string, and do another round. So two rounds of that finger picking pattern. So it goes this way. For A major chord, George Harrison used this shape. We know that this is D major. And the triad for this shape is just playing the three strings. So you can simplify the fingering by just using your index finger to press the third and the first strings since they are at the same fret. And then you can just use your middle finger on the second string at third fret instead of the ring finger. So this can be the fingering for D major chord. And by just playing the three treble strings, this becomes the triad chord for D major. And this is the shape that George used for A major chord. So let's look for A major chord. If this is D major, this is E major, F major, G major, and A major. And the arpeggiation for this triad chord is the same. Starting with the third string, to second string, to first string, back to second string and do another round for this chord. And in place of B major chord, George Harrison actually played the dominant 7th of that chord. So B7. And the shape that George Harrison used is the shape of the simple open D dominant 7th chord, which is this one. And the triad for this chord is simply playing the three strings. So using this shape, let's look for B7. So if this is D7, this would be E7, F7, G7, A7, and this would be B7. And the right hand pattern is the same. Begin with the third string, second string, first string, back to second string, and do another round for this chord. So it goes this way. And in place of E major chord, George actually played E major sixth. 
This is E major. E major 6 is adding one more finger, the small finger on the 2nd string at 2nd fret. And then this is the sound. But the shape that George used to play E major 6 is using the shape for A major 6. This is A major 6. The triad involves only the treble strings, so we can just reposition our index finger to just press the treble strings since we are only playing the treble strings. And if this is A major 6 or A6, this is B6, C6, D6, and E6 or E major 6. And this is what George Harrison used. And the right hand pattern is the same. So as a summary, this shape for F sharp minor and this shape for C sharp minor, this shape for A major, and this shape for B dominant 7, and this shape for E major 6. You would notice that you have the same triad shape for C sharp minor and E major 6. So the transitioning between these triad chords would be simple as they are all within these frets or within this area. And I would suggest that instead of playing your F sharp minor with the tip of your index finger like this, I would suggest that you use a partial bar to play F sharp minor. So your index finger pressing the three strings. Although you have your index finger pressing the second and the third, but it's these fingers that are producing the sounds on the second and the third strings respectively. I suggest that you use your index as a partial bar because it's easy to transition from F sharp minor to C sharp minor. This is F sharp minor. To C sharp minor, all you have to do is just take out these two fingers. Now this is C sharp minor. And then to the next chord, which is A major, just position your middle finger on the second string at 10th fret. And go into the next chord, which is B dominant 7th. Position your ring finger on the third string at 11th fret and your small finger on the first string at 11th fret. I would suggest that you keep your index finger here while you are playing B dominant 7th. Because you're going to the next chord, which is E major 6th, and the shape is this one. So from B dominant 7th, all you have to do is just take out these three fingers to play a E major 6th. The progression of chords for the verse is F sharp minor, then C sharp minor, it goes back to F sharp minor, goes back to C sharp minor, and then another time for F sharp minor, and also for C sharp minor. So it's just like doing F sharp minor, C sharp minor for three rounds. And then after that, you have the A major, and then the B seventh, and then the, the next chord, E major six. For each measure, you do two rounds of the finger picking pattern, which is third string, second string, first string, back to second string. You do two rounds of that for each chord. The sequence of chords for verse number two is this. One measure for F sharp minor. One measure for C sharp minor. One measure for F sharp minor. One measure for C sharp minor. One measure for F sharp minor. One measure for C sharp minor. And then one measure for A. One measure for B dominant seventh. 
and two measures for E major 6. But for E major 6, the finger picking pattern is a bit different. For the first measure of E major 6, it's the same pattern as the other chords. But on the second measure, you just do one round of the pattern. And then, pick the third string one more time. And the second string one more time. So it goes like this. After verse number 2 is the middle 8 section, which I labeled refrain in the music sheet. And George played the chords on whole note rhythm. And the sequence of chords is this. C sharp minor, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and then B major, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and C sharp minor, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and G sharp minor, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and C sharp minor, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and G sharp minor, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and then B major, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, and then B7 or B dominant 7th, just take out your ring finger, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. But B dominant 7th is played shorter because within that measure you have the B7 or the B dominant 7th and the riff. So the B7 and the riff is played within one measure and it goes like this one and two and three and four and and then this note is already on the next measure so on that measure is a measure between b dominant seventh and the first three notes of the riff so this is b dominant seventh and the first three notes of the riff are this and it goes this way, rhythmically. One and two and three and four and... And then on the next measure at count one is the fourth note of the riff. And George Harrison have to hold this note for that measure. So this note is held up for one measure. So that's the whole note rhythm. And if you want to learn more about the other basic rhythmic patterns like half note rhythm, quarter note rhythm, and eighth note rhythm, click this link for that lesson. And this note, the fourth note of the riff, begins the verse number three for George Harrison's lead guitar playing. So he has to hold this note on the first measure and then on the second measure of that's when he continued his stride chords with C sharp minor. So for verse number three, George's arpeggiation on triad chords begins on the second chord, which is C sharp minor. So it goes this way. After verse 3 is George's guitar solo where the modulation from key of E to F took place. So all the chords for the rhythm guitar played by John goes up by a half step. The first three notes of George's guitar solo are all on the third string. So first is open third string and then a second fret and a third fret. And this is followed by an open first string or E string. The next is the second string play the third fret. But right after picking this note, you'll have to apply a slide left hand technique. And that is while this note is ringing, 
you slide it to 6th fret so it goes like this and then you pick it one more time and then here apply vibrato so from the beginning it goes like this so that's the first part the next part is beginning with the same three notes and again playing the first string open but this time you play the second string at fifth fret and then you slide down to third fret so you just pick the second string once at fifth fret and while it's ringing you slide back to third fret so the second part is like this and then you apply vibrato on this note the third part is exactly the same as the first part and then the next part is an arpeggiation of this shape B flap since you're only playing three strings so you can you can use this as your fingering so all you have to do is play it broken starting on the first string then second and third but you can also play it this way using these other fingers the ring and the small finger so that when you go to the next note you have your middle finger ready on the second fret on the third string and then you pick it one more time and with a slide to open third string so it goes like this and then the next notes are these ones on the fifth string at third fret and then open fourth string and then to third string at second fret and then apply vibrato and the next part on the fifth string at third fret then open and then to sixth string at third fret to first fret and then you pick the sixth string at first fret one more time and apply a hammer on technique at third fret so this part goes like this So the whole solo part goes like this. The last part of George's guitar solo with hammer-on technique is actually the first measure of verse number four. And George started verse number four with this note and he has to hold it for the whole measure. And so he started his arpeggiations on the second measure with D minor chord. Now all the chords are raised by a half step. So that means all the shapes will be moved by one fret up. So if in the previous verses you have this shape for F sharp minor, you'll have to move this one fret up and this would be G minor. And then for C sharp minor, which is this one, we have to raise this by a half step by moving it one fret up. So, so now this is D minor and this is A for the previous part of the song moving this up by one fret 
so here so this becomes a sharp or b flat which is what is given in the music sheet and for b dominant seventh we'll raise it by a half step this one moving it one fret so this becomes c dominant seventh and for E major 6 with this one, we'll have to raise it by a half step. So we move it one fret up. So this is F6. So as a summary of the triads for this part, resulting from the modulation, we have this chord for G minor. And this chord for D minor. And this chord for B flat or A sharp and this one for C7 or C dominant 7 and to F6 or F major 6 but George Harrison started his arpeggiation on the second chord because on the first measure he can't play G minor because he has to hold this note. So he started his arpeggiation on the second measure with D minor. So it goes like this. And the outro of the song is also the riff but played at a higher step. So that means raising all the notes by one fret up. So the positions will now be here. On the fifth string at third fret, that would be the first note of the riff. And then the second note is on the fourth string at third fret. And then the third note is on the fourth string at second fret. And the fourth note is on the fifth string at fifth fret. And you have to apply vibrato on this note. And this riff that is raised up by a half step will have to be played four times. So it goes like this. This last note, you can hold it as long as you can. That's why you have that symbol fermata in the music sheet. So I have discussed the four note riff which was used for the intro, interlude and outro, as well as the triads that George Harrison played, the finger picking for the arpeggiated triads, and the guitar solo part. Now for the demonstration of the lead guitar playing of the whole song, check out one of the end screens. I hope that you enjoyed and learned something from this tutorial. If you do, please don't forget to click the like button. Share this video or share this content so that others would also learn from this tutorial. You can also save this tutorial to your playlist so you can watch it later. And don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be the first to know once a new video has been uploaded. And also you help me grow this channel. At the end of this video are end screens. One of them is a demonstration of how to play the lead guitar part of this song. The other end screen is a playlist for chords and lyrics. Another end screen is a playlist for guitar lessons. This is Teacher Bob. Thank you for watching.